Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us right here on The Mike Lee Show. And today I have Elaine Diamond Bailey with us. She's an op and she's got some really incredible children's books out. And we're going to find all of that out in just a minute. Elaine, how are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I'm so loving nice. this hair. I'm loving everything I'm looking at. She is so creative and out of the box. She is not afraid to be seen and look beautiful oh, all the same time. And I'm loving the glasses. Look, you know, I love my glasses. I, we were talking Listen, to- Listen, you said you were gonna come with them. I have some competition with the glasses, I see. Uh, but it's low key though. No, you got me beat. I ain't gonna even try, you know. You got me beat today, but I'm just letting you know, I'm right behind you, you know. <laughs> Serving, serving with the glasses. So let me just ask you this. You have a fabulous look. When we show some of your pictures, which you're gonna flash up on the screen right here with the book, who inspires your look? It's so out of the box and so beautiful. You're so uh, daring and so out there in front of us. Who inspires you to just be you? Um, honestly, I do. Um, I just take what the different things that I like. That's me, actually. I'm very out of the box, bold. I like to push the envelope and do something different, especially when it comes to working with children. That's my background, working with kids. So I know certain things catch their attention, certain things kind of, you know, doesn't. So I want to do something that, you know, they'll want to stare at. And definitely, they definitely look at me when I'm wearing this blue hair. So. <laughs> that is great. That is great. And talking about children, you have children of your own. Three beautiful children, two little queens, and one little king. Absolutely. Tell us about your children. What is it like being a, so beautiful, young, and out there, but still having to be a mother? Um, oh my gosh, it's very, 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 sometimes can be a challenge, but my kids make it so much easier for me because they're a big part of what I do with the book. They're, you know, my mini CFOs, like nothing goes out unless they, unless they approve it. Like they're wow. a big part of it. So I definitely, you know, I love, you know, that they don't stress me out. They actually add more to the book and they help me out. They let me know if something's looking a little aged and then they let me know, okay, mom, it's a new day, a new world. We need to step out and maybe try this and try these ideas. So that's, oh, that's incredible. So they're like your, um, uh, what do you call it? The checklist before it goes out or anything. Oh, absolutely. Is absolutely. That's, a, that's amazing. That's they awesome. They approve everything. I can honestly say that. Very, very <laughs> smart when did you first realize you wanted to be an author oh wow um i back in 2018 um i've always loved to write and like i said my background is working with children so i started it back in 2018 and you know i just never really found out the time and it was so funny the pandemic happened and it just shook my world a little bit but it actually as it did everyone else but it actually helped me to start on the book. Like my kids, they were like, well, this is the perfect time. We're, you know, we're sitting home, we can't go anywhere. So I actually had the time to look for an illustrator that I love and actually concentrate on my craft. Wow, so the and the process of the first book, now this is your first book, you're just getting it, it going and everything. How long did it take you from your start time to just finishing the book? How long was it? When I actually had the time to sit and concentrate on what I was doing, again, it was during the pandemic. I can honestly say it took me about maybe in all two months to get out. That was with the biggest thing was the illustrations. The writing to me was the easiest part. That's what I do. That's what I love. It was the illustrations because when you have something in your head and how you want to see it on portrayed out on paper, it was totally different. So that was the longest part, honestly, just the illustrations getting with my look together. Now, tell us, um, why did you decide to do a pandemic version of the book? Um, honestly, I decided to do the pandemic. It, a big thing was my kids. They were like, Mom, let's step into, you know, the world's changing. This is a new world. You know, let's do something different. So I wanted to do something about the pandemic just in the eyes you know through the eyes of a child like they were going through a lot just like us adults you know so mm -hmm. they couldn't go anywhere they couldn't see they they couldn't see their friends what they've you know they've always been told to you know be you know huggers and you mm -hmm. know and now you're in the safe space and time it's like don't touch so you know it, it was a it was a big decision but i'm glad that we did it and um i love the book the book is doing great so yeah so let's talk about the pandemic. You know, this was a big shock to uh, 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 end of 2019 going into 2020, March 2020. I remember exactly. Absolutely. How did the pandemic impact you, 
as a mother, as a writer, with your children? How did that change everything that you were doing? Oh, wow. Um, the pandemic made me realize that I was too comfortable being comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and I know it sounds um, really different, you know, to say, but it just made me realize I was very comfortable. You know, like I said, I started writing a book back in 2018. But of course, there was, you know, being a mother, working, and you just never find the time. You're comfortable. It's like, okay, but the pandemic made me realize that, okay, you don't have it together as much as you think you do. And I needed to find something to you know, like I said, we were confined in our home. So I need to find some type of outlet, therapeutic outlet. And other than dance, which I couldn't even teach dance to, of course, my dancers, mm -hmm. writing was my outlet. Like, so that's how I, of course, express, you know, and put my dance lessons in books. So it was a huge outlet and it helped me concentrate and keep my mind on the goal. So I wow. definitely came out stronger from the pandemic. That's awesome. That's awesome. Who designed the cover art for your, for your first two books? Um, it's absolutely yeah. beautiful when you see Thank it. Thank you. The colors, yeah. the little black girl. It's just adorable. Thank you. Um, honestly, you know, um, my illustrator loved her. The, that did the first two books, Erica Lewis uh, Willis. She actually did the illustrations, and it's like she was reading my mind. Like I would literally text her like, hey, I see this, you know, a little girl jumping over rainbows and just picture this. And she was putting it on paper. Like I sent her the weirdest and most <laughs> wildest, you know, ideas. And she put it on paper. And the little girl, to me, the characters were the easiest things. It was just a reflection of my children. So oh, the little wow. girl on the front of the book um, with the puppy hair, that's literally, a you know, my daughter. So it makes me feel special when I have um, parents and grandparents coming to me or writing me or DMing me saying that their grandchild or their daughter or their niece, they think that's them on the front of the book. So oh, I, I just beautiful. feel very blessed and humble. That's beautiful. Okay, yes. so how do you create? Where do you get your ideas from, your inspiration? Because, you know, as a writer and I write, I, you know, we have the writer's block. We have it when we're very yes. busy in life doing all this other stuff. How do you tame it down and get to that quiet spiritual spot where everything clicks in? Oh, my gosh. You know, um, it to me, honestly, because of my background with children, it kind of, it comes naturally. I work with kids. Like I said, I used to teach um, dance. So honestly, a lot of it is just real life, but in, you know, animated form, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> the little girls that are, you know, like Jay, she daydreams. That was my daughter and her friends. Like they just, when they were in dance, they would be daydreaming and looking off and, you know, I have to get them back in shape. You know, Coach Kiki happy. Hey, hey, let, let's come back down, to, you know, from La La Land and let's get these dance moves together. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> honestly, it comes from experience and just, it's just making it, a, you know, basically a cartoon in my head, to be totally honest. It really comes very natural to me That's because awesome. of, of course, my background. Now, I know you, you say the children support you. What about your other family members? How do they feel about you just being so driven uh, in the arts as an author, but you also teach dance, you work with children, you do all of these other creative things, and then you're just creative and out of the box. How, why do you, how do you feel like your family supports you? Or what do you, what do you get from your family? The support and inspiration. I definitely, you know, my my family definitely supports me in a major way. Uh, my friends, um, family, both support me, you know, in a major way. I can honestly say, I really think they didn't, <laughs> When I first told, you know, everyone I was actually going to be an author, you know, that I was writing a book, it happened so quickly. I honestly don't think they believed me. I told them literally within a month's time that, oh, okay, I'm, I'm writing a book. I'm going to put out a book. So, of course, they're like, okay. And then when I actually put it out and they started ordering the book, they're like, wait, this is a real book. <laughs> Uh -huh. so I really think it kind of shocked people. Like, oh, she, she's, oh, this is a, I'm like, did you think I did the drawings myself like so i think i, I think when people it. see it like you know we manifest we say it we manifest and we're thinking about it but when they Absolutely. actually see the physical thing that they've seen in walmart and target and it's you know of other people's product and they go oh my god you did it you know it really clicks in that oh you you weren't you weren't playing we'll be right back with more of elaine diamond bailey right here on the mike lee show sponsored by the one and only jamie foster brown we'll be right back because i love you I want to be your only guy. Because I love you, skip class with me. Let's stay in bed today. Because I love you, I just want to be with you so freaking much. Because I love you, 
I waited for you after Chem Lab. You were walking with Mark? Because I love you. You shouldn't be hanging out with that dude. You should know how dumb that makes me look. I don't care if she's your lab partner. Why do you have texts from him? Because I love you. This number? Delete. Because I love you. This Jason number? Delete. And, and Ben? Delete. Because I love you, I should smash your phone. I'll let you give me your password instead. Because I love you. I will check your texts every day. You got lucky. Because I love you. Because I love you. You think it's okay. Because I love you. Y you understand. Because I love you, you stop talking to your classmates. And you feel completely alone. Because I love you. That's not love. All right, and we are back with more of Elaine Diamond Bailey right here on the Mike Lee Show. So I'm jumping right in because I want to know, the book is called Dazzling Dancing Diva. What was the inspiration behind writing this type of book and even creating this beautiful tongue twister title, Dancing, a Dazzling Dancing Diva? Where did this come from? Um, it came from my background of dancing. Um, I've been teaching and I've been teaching dance. I would honestly say since I was like 16 or 17, I've been taking dance since I was five or six. So it was honestly, it was just my background. It is what I knew, you know, as far wow. as dance positions and teaching little girls, um, as far as teaching stretching technique, that's what I did. I, I specialized in technique. That's what I was known for. So the idea came naturally. The characters, of course, um, I wanted to have just to display melanated, just that mm -hmm. beautiful melanin skin and just show that, you know, we could wear different types of colors. We are interested in different types of things. Everyone's different. So that's what I want to do. Just bring something a little bit different. I love that. Them. Now, you also have another project called Marvelous Miles. What's the yeah. inspiration behind that book? Marvelous Miles came from, of course, the character. The, each character will have their own spinoff. You'll see in the book. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Miles is actually Jade's brother, she, the annoying little oh, brother. Oh, wow. And, you know, he wasn't even in the process of even being thought of being done. But uh, because I do a, um, the school tour and book tours, that actually was something that everyone was asking for. Like, oh, when are you going to do one about the annoying little brother Miles? You know, for big sisters that had that little brother, you know, the annoying little brother that just got on the nerves. So that's actually where Miles came into play. And also I have a son, you know, so Miles is honestly a reflection of him a lot of things. You're so dope for that. That's that's like so great. Um, now you, um, there was a time in your life when you had to sit your your daughters down and have a talk with them about you, that they weren't seeing enough of themselves. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, whether it was book publication, television, mm -hmm. whatever. How did you handle that? What was that like to sit them down? Um, because I don't know if enough parents do that enough to really communicate with their children about. Uh, their blackness, their beauty, their yes. hair, uh, yes. their skin tone, um, and all of these things so that we know who we are as a culture. How did you handle that? Um, honestly, it really was a hard, I think it was a very hard conversation to have because of course I've always taught, you know, my children, especially, you know, my daughters that, you know, you're young, you know, black queens, respect yourself, like everything from your crown down to your toes, you're beautiful, you know, um, love yourself. So self-love is something we always like instilled in our kids. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just really different because one of my daughter, you know, daughters basically looks like my twin and mm -hmm. she's more dark skinned like myself. And then I have my youngest and she, honestly, she looks like, you know, she's mixed, very fair skin mm -hmm. and, you know, same, you know, same father and, and same mom. And, mm -hmm. you know, they just always, you know, kind of every, you know, my youngest would always hear people say that, you know, she looks like me and, you know, she doesn't like, oh, you know, she gets more compliments as far as like looking like you, that's your twin. So I had to, you know, have, it was definitely a tough conversation, but, you know, um, again, we teach them self-love and we came out with a beautiful character, Galaxy. 
She mm-hmm. has been vitiligo, and honestly, people, um, you know, they always wonder how did I come up with a character with vitiligo. And like I told them, it's a reflection of both my daughters. One is very fair skin, one is very dark skin, like myself. So putting those two together makes a, you know, you are so dope, man. You are so dope. <laughs> So, so it wasn't planned. It just happened. I'm like, oh, it happened. Right. Yeah, yeah. So now, um, so this rolls me over into this topic. We just had another uh, school shooting in Texas. Uh, uh, I can say Freddie Graham, Baltimore, George Floyd. How do you, even with your son and your children, what do they say to you? And I'm asking you this because I, it's great. I have the opportunity to have a young, uh, black entrepreneurial mother on to talk about the children like what are your what is the conversation that your kids are bringing to you as children about what they're seeing in the world what are they voicing to you you know it's it that's very uh, that's really a complicated you know um situation because i'm living in it now of course yeah. like i said the world my kids are um they are older um mm. and they do see a lot of things and you know it i think having a conversation with my son you know about you can't you know don't walk down the street if you have yeah. on a hoodie yeah. like to have that conversation i think that was more difficult than having the birds and the bees conversation to be honest In this you know, yeah, no yeah. Parent, yeah no parent should have to you know have that conversation but that is the world that we live in um me and my kids were actually just talking about like now with everything going on with texas we've seen there's a company that actually makes bulletproof backpacks which is sad but we actually having right. a conversation just about that yesterday like she was like oh well, if you get me one i want a pink one but it's just sad that like in there like they're growing up in this like this wasn't normal back when you know i was going to school but this is their new normal so yeah. to have conversations like this i'm not gonna lie it's definitely a little hard but we definitely break it down and we talk to them and we don't sugarcoat it and we let them know this is the real world and this is what's going on and to be aware and cautious and that's you know do the best we can absolutely that's great when well um, when you hear the word black girl magic what does that mean to you Black girl magic, magic just means to me confidence, like just unapologetic, unapologetic, just do you, you know, that's what it means to me, like express yourself how you need to, don't be scared to jump out the box, you know, dance like no one's watching, you know, do you, don't be, don't be scared to voice your opinion, you know, because like I tell my kids, it's not what you say, it's how you say it, mm-hmm. so yeah. Yes, I, you know, it's just confidence, letting it shine through. When you walk in, you demand your presence, like you're, you 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 own that room. And mm-hmm. that's what I teach my kids, hold your head up high, confidence, and let your confidence speak louder than anything, like when they walk in the room. Like, be confident, hold your head up, don't hold your head down to the ground. It's Absolutely. not going anywhere. <laughs> like, Absolutely right, right, right. You don't live in California, we're in Florida, there are no earthquakes, hold your head up. Right. Like, right. Very so, good. Absolutely. <laughs> I was watching something the other day and there was a group of black women. They were all, I think Mary J. Blige and there was uh, the mayor of Atlanta and they were all talking about the phrase strong black woman. The pros and cons of that sort of um, uh, word, uh, phrase. When you hear that, does it ring positive or negative to you? Because these women were feeling like, you know, the word to be a strong black woman it's not always a positive thing for them because it means you've got to always be something that you may not be that day, Absolutely. that moment, that time. And why does a black woman always have to be a strong black woman? Why can't she be just a woman, a vulnerable woman, a woman who cares, a woman who wants to cry? What does that word ring with you? Or that phrase, you right? Know, and I think of, you know, and I totally agree when you think of that, like, and only in a perfect world. But um, mm-hmm. I believe that we're strong because of the things I know myself, speaking for myself, I, you know, I have to, being a mother, I'm strong because of the things, honestly, that I have been through. And I know that I have, you know, three beautiful children depending on me. I have no other way but to be strong, a strong Black woman. I have no time to be vulnerable. So I definitely understand that, you know, you have to kind of like take your have your alone time. Mm, you know, yeah, talk yeah. to someone, you know, sometimes because it definitely can be a very mental and emo- big emotional strain. So you have to find that balance. You know, me, you know, with my kids, we find that balance. Um, as a mother, I have to find that balance um, with being, like I said, that strong black woman. They don't get to see mother, you know, have weekdays. There are no weekdays with me, you know, to them because I, you know, you can't show that. So I definitely, I totally agree. 
Wow, but I've cool. that I, my strength comes from everything that I've, you know, been through. It's been a learning experience. I'm still learning now, you know, with building the foundation with my brand and what I'm going through now. And I always, you know, let my kids know, you know, I'm always, you know, I have nobody. If, if it's not me, it's nobody. They have me to depend on. So that's it. That that it stops there. So you're such a great mom. How um, what are you most proud of? You know, I'm most proud, honestly, of the hard work and just the the different obstacles I've went through as far as like this journey and, mm -hmm. you know, having my kids see that their mother has did this from nothing. Like they've seen the long nights <laughs> mm -hmm. and they've seen the early mornings. So just so they can see that their mother is building something that's to be, you know, for them, you know, when I'm not here anymore, building a legacy and, and you know, and them to see it and see the different steps that it wasn't given to me. That is something that I'm literally, I work hard at and I'm not going to stop until I feel that I'm where I need to be. You're truly building a legacy and setting an example for your children. And I will tell you, that. that's for sure. Uh, how can people follow you on IG, Facebook, and all this social media stuff? How can they follow your journey? I am Elaine Diamond Bailey across the board. So right. on any of my social platforms, just if you put in Elaine Diamond Bailey, really on Instagram, Facebook. Um, the only thing I don't have is TikTok, uh, Snapchat, all of that, you know, even with um, websites. I'm in the process now of getting my website um, redone under construction. Everything is Elaine Diamond Bailey across the board. Awesome. How can people purchase the books? My books right now, they are on Amazon. So okay. you can go to Amazon right now, put in the um, Attack of the Germs and Dazzling Dancing Diva. They actually have a great special. And I'm super excited because we're working on merchandise next. So I just can't wait to for the next phase and the next level with Dazzling Dancing Diva. I can't wait because we're going to want that interview here right Absolutely. here on the Mike Lee Show. Any last words before you leave? Anybody you want to thank? Anything you want to leave us with before uh, you leave? Yes, I want to just thank, you know, my friends, my family, people that, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, this definitely wasn't an easy journey. I received 101 no's, but once you hear mm. that one person that says yes, you know, you never know where it's going to take you. You have to just go with it. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing. Much that's awesome. I want to say thank you to Meek Entertainment. That's Rob for setting this up and making yes. sure that we did this interview. Uh, and I want to say to you so much kudos and good luck and praise to everything that you're doing. The thank you. Oh my gosh. I'm <laughs> thank you. Butterflies, the whole interview. Thank you so much. Like, it is an honor to, to have you on the show today. I can't wait for you to eventually meet Jamie. Jamie's going to love you. And yeah. we're going to have this interview up and out very soon. You have been wonderful. I'm so excited for your future. I love the book, the colors, the illustration. It's a really, really great product. It's representation of our culture and it makes us look so good. So thank you for making us look good. You know and what that's I'm all it's ever going to do. That's it. <laughs> Everybody, thank you for joining us right here on The Mike Lee Show, sponsored by Jamie Foster Brown. And this has been an incredible interview with the one and only Elaine Diamond Bailey right here on The Mike Lee Show. Everybody, have a great weekend. We'll see you all next week.